Howdy folks, Gruck the Duck Farmer here, and it's a lovely morning here in the Void World, and because of a comment I uh, was given, let's talk about big reactors. In my previous video, we I talked about uh, different ways of generating energy, and big reactors is an excellent way of doing that. So, the, the question was, what about different configurations of the big reactors? How does that affect things? So let's talk about that. Here we have the cheapest of the big reactors, the smallest and the, the least costly in resources. It's the 3x3 three three cube. Uh, it only has a single core, and to make it valid, you just need one controller, an access port to put in your fuel, and yeah, you don't technically need a, a an output, you know, a power tap, but that's why you're building it, so you might as well. Uh, inside, you can't see it. You know, let's just pop it real quick. There is a fuel rod right there, and we have a, on top of it a control rod. Let's put that back in place. And notice that the the reactor changes its configuration and look if it's a valid structure. This is invalid, and that's valid. So looking at this, this is the, the smallest and easiest to make, and if we take a look at this, it's going to chew out about 264 uh, RF per tick, which is a pretty decent amount, uh, much better than any of the other little reactors and uh, generators that, uh, that you can produce. But what if we make it just a little bit bigger? In this case, for the cost of eight casings and an additional fuel rod, we're doing more than double the power output. Or if we make it three tall, so we have a little bit more resources in it, it does more than three times the output. And this is uh, what I think is kind of a, a something we can extrapolate across all the builds. If you add additional layers, you should get more than each layer individually. It should uh, build up on it. Uh, if we take a look at the interface here real quick, there is an interesting way that these temperatures uh, play against each other. Uh, the, the higher the temperature, you get uh, more power, more burnout, you, you get uh, different issues and so you don't always want to hit the, the highest temperature or the lowest temperature. There's a sweet spot in there and some of these builds hit that and some of them don't. Uh, if we, another thing that we can do with these is we can have a little bit of space around the core to provide coolant and there's a multitude of different things that we can put in there. In fact, uh, looking at this, air we could use air. It, I really don't recommend it. It's worse than any of those. Uh, we could use solid blocks. Uh, diamond is the best, but yeah, you know, it's kind of expensive to do that, but that's certainly better than using air. Uh, you can have liquid fuel uh, coolants here, uh, liquid redstone, which is as good as the, the blocks, liquid cry uh, cryothium, which is actually technically gelid cryothium, but I always went with liquid. Uh, but in this case, the liquefied ender, that's the best as far as producing power. Uh, and so in, in this case, it, it's producing more than that one, even though it's the same number of control rods, the same uh, amount being produced, because it's cooling it better. It's landing in that sweet spot better. Uh, so again, if we raise the size of this, we can see that the, the, the power that comes out is more than doubled. And if we raise it again one more, the, the power here is more than triple. That's the, the, the standard uh, way that that works. But we don't have to have a single core. Uh, we could go ahead and, and have multiple cores. And this one we've got two different examples, the, the same 5x5x5 uh, by five by five that we had over there. But this one uh, has an X shape and this one has a cross shape as far as the five cores. These two are exactly the same as far as resources are concerned, but uh, you can see as far as the power is concerned, uh, the, the cross shape, yay, rain! The, the cross shape is a little bit less effective than the X shape as far as generating power. This if you were to, if you had a little bit more resources and didn't want to build the, the tiny cube, this would be the structure I would build. This one right here. It's a great intermediate uh, 
reactor that will produce a, a decent amount of, of power for you and a very small amount of resources. Uh, you're going to need uh, three times four, so that's twelve buckets of liquid ender, and that's uh, four uh, ender pearls each, so that's forty-eight ender pearls. That's doable in survival, uh, even if all you have to do is run around and find enders, uh, endermen, and kill them before hitting the end. So very, very doable, very buildable. But what if we make it bigger? We saw there was a difference when we went from no coolant to adding a ring of coolant. What if we take that same cross shape X-shape uh, reactor and put an additional row of coolant around it? In this case, uh, like, uh, the gelid cryothium. The power goes up more. Over here, same structure, that's 4700, and here we're looking at uh, 7300. Uh, RF per tick just because we added a layer of, of coolant and when you have this extra layer of coolant around it it starts to make sense to use the gelid cryothium. It's really a pain to generate so for the the tiny amount of extra energy you might not find it, uh, it worth the, the effort but it is a, a little bit more effective and that's for the, uh, the, the, the X-shape uh, power cores but what if we go and we fill it out. They will irradiate each other and actually reduce the burnout. And since we have four additional cores, as you can see, we do have a, an uptick in energy. So that certainly works. But what if we su surround it with a double layer of coolant? Because this is starting to get kind of hot. Same configuration between these two, but this has a double layer of coolant. And from going to almost 10,000 we're getting about a 4,000 uh, RF per tick more because of the extra coolant. So that is something you know that that you could build. If I'm needing a, a much larger amount, you know, about three times the amount that thing pumps out, I will start building one of these. Uh, sometimes four high as far as the core. Um, I typically don't do five because th then we start getting into heat issues again, and it's not as effic effective but this will uh, definitely help and f I decided well what if we go obscenely big uh, this one here has a triple layer of coolant and as you can see there's nine layers uh, no I lied there's uh, ten layers of core inside here this is generating almost 50,000 RF per tick but this is a huge amount of resources to build. The, the liquid cryothium itself is monstrous. That's 720 buckets of liquid cryothium. Uh, that's, it would make more sense to build three of these than it would be to build that, just because there's so much fewer resources needed for this over that big monster. Uh, one additional uh, comment. I don't see the need of having a super powerful reactor. What I see the need is to have a huge amount of reserve power. And in the previous video I talked about how I would put a, the power out, I would put up on the top, and then I would put banks of capacitors up here to store uh, energy. And if I needed more energy because it, I come back from mining and, and, and I need to charge up my cells or, or the Tesseract network is just not keeping up, I need more capacitors and just keep building them up uh, to a 2 billion uh, RF uh, storage. And if I need more than that, I can build on top of that. That's what I do as far as keeping, uh, keeping power. And then uh, one other question that was given was, well, how do you get the liquids in and out? Well, there's the difficult way, which is you just grab a bucket, you know, either the redstone, the, the, the ender, or the cryothium, and you just bucket by bucket place it in. Uh, the, the ender is problematic because as soon as you touch it, you get teleported. And so if you're, you're ha falling into the, the ender a lot, you'll be bouncing on who knows where. Uh, the, Gelid cryothium is easier because if you were to place it somewhere, it actually acts as a combination liquid and solid. 
uh, a liquid, if I were to place a bucket of water right here, it would start pouring out from that source block and the source block stays. The, the gelid cryothium, if I were to place it right here, would st start pouring out, but it would also sink. The source block sinks to the bottom. So that's easier to fill these tanks. But the easiest method is to use uh, a combination of tools. Uh, if we're wanting to extract fluids out, then we just go ahead and use the electric pump, put a little fluid conduit on here, I've got a little tank, and it will just start extracting out the, the information, the stuff right there, give it a little quick power, and it will start sucking out all the, the, the fluids. Now, if we want to change this, and uh, actually I need that back, if we want to pump fluids in, then we use the fluidic plenisher, go away snow, and that will uh, generate for us the the reverse of a pump. It will push in the fluids that we need. So let's go ahead and power it again, and let's go ahead and grab that uh, container. So there's the fluid source, just changes so that it will extract out, and it will start pushing in the fluids. And you can kind of see how some of the fluids are falling down as it's filling in. This is so much easier to do than bucket by bucket. However, it is going to require uh, the, the cost of building the, the fluidic plenisher. But if you're going to go from uh, a reactor this size to a reactor that size and you want to keep the fluids, bucket by bucket would be a pain. might be worth uh, uh, doing that. One of the, the bugs I have noticed, if we take a look at the fluidic plenisher here, it will say when it's finished, it'll say, yes, I've, I've done everything that needs to be done. With the way the cryothium sinks, sometimes it thinks it is finished, but you can look in and you can see that there's spots that it hasn't. And I think that's based on its algorithm, the way it, it calculates whether or not it's put something in. And it, it thinks it's put something in, and it's fallen down, and it doesn't know that. And so it thinks it's it's done. So if that happens, if you come and it says it's done, see, it says it's finished, but if we take a quick look, we can see there's a couple blocks that haven't been filled in. You could either do that manually, or you use your pick, you, you, you break it, put it back in place, and it will go ahead and finish the rest of the job, except I just lost my power source. But it will go ahead and, and do that for you. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. This has been Grok the Duck Farmer talking about big reactors. Bye!